Hey y'all, thank you so much for joining me for another What's for Dinner. To start off the week, I'm making one of our absolute favorite meals, and that is this Frito Chili Pie. So here I am just adding in one can of petite diced tomatoes, juice and all, over top of one pound of cooked and drained ground beef. I do always season my ground beef while it's cooking. And then I've just added in one eight ounce can of tomato sauce, followed by a can of pinto beans and a can of chili beans. And I do not drain those. I follow that up with one package of taco seasoning. It doesn't matter the brand just use whatever you prefer and then I add in one teaspoon of chili powder and one teaspoon of garlic powder and just a pinch of cayenne pepper and then I'm just going to simply stir all of that together I'm making sure that I'm getting those seasonings really distributed and then I'm going to pop my lid on and I always cook mine on low for at least four hours but if you have a really busy day and you're out and about a longer cook time is just fine so here it is after the four hours I'm pouring in one cup of some shredded sharp cheddar cheese again use whatever cheese you prefer but we love the sharp cheddar and I'm just going to stir that until it melts and it takes less than a minute. And then I'm going to show you here how I assemble our bowls. This is hands down one of the easiest meals to make and I have not met one person that does not like it. When I can find a dinner that all four of us really enjoy, nothing beats that. Up next was another really bomb dinner. So recently we went on a little trip to Tennessee just a few weekends ago and we went to this Pirates dinner show and the soup they served there was so delicious that I had to go to the gift shop and purchase this mix to make it at home. So all you do is just add some water and some mixed veggies. Um, if you've never been here, it's really comparable to Dixie Stampede soup. Um, I feel like more people's probably been there. But anyway, so to go along with it, I am making some pork chops. I'm just cooking that in some olive oil and I just seasoned it with some grind staffed all purpose rub. The way I like to cook my pork chops over the stove top is I like to sear them for just a couple of minutes at high heat on each side and then I will pop a lid on and I turn it down to low so that it can finish cooking through the middle. These were pretty thick and I just do that until all of my sides are done and it just always seems to work out. So there they are. I think they look perfect. And then this soup, I'm just telling y'all, it's so delicious. If you've had it before, you know. Um, I like it so much that I told Josh that I want him to order me some for Christmas. And I just have some carrots. And then I made some homemade rolls. And I do have a whole video that I've filmed on those rolls because they are so easy and delicious. And I do hope to get that out soon. But yeah, I like to dip my pork chops in barbecue sauce usually. And then, of course, I put extra pepper on my soup. And dipping those rolls in that soup was so good. Up next was a new to me recipe and it's called a million dollar chicken casserole. So I've just took one rotisserie chicken and I shredded that up and tossed it into this large mixing bowl. And I'm adding in one cup of some cottage cheese followed by a half a cup of sour cream. And then you'll need a half a block of room temperature cream cheese. And then here I'm just sprinkling in some onion and garlic powder. And you guys, I left out a major ingredient and I didn't even realize it until I was eating it. So you do need to add in one can of cream of chicken soup. I cannot believe I forgot that. I was so irritated, but hey, there's bigger problems going on in the world. So we can deal with it. So anyways, I just mix all of that together and I'm pressing that down into a sprayed nine by nine casserole dish. So as you can see, I'm just kind of making sure it's even and smooth on the top. I'm just taking the back of my spoon and pushing that around. And then I'm going to get started on the topping. So the recipe called for five tablespoons of butter, but I decided to use four tablespoons. Not that big of a difference, but you know. Anyways, I'm just letting that melt down. And then I'm going to be adding in one sleeve of crushed Ritz crackers. These are like the mini half sleeves, so that's why I'm adding in two packages and then at this point I have cut the heat and I'm just tossing those two things together making sure that those crackers really absorb all of that butter and then the recipe didn't say to do this but it just sounded really good to me at the time I decided to add in some of this everything bagel seasoning just to give it a little extra something something and it was a great addition to it it really gave it a good flavor 
So once I got that finished, I just simply toss that on top of the casserole and then I'm going to, of course, spread that out evenly. And that's going to go in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes. I did mine for 35 minutes. And then to go along with it, I was really wanting some asparagus. It's one of my favorite vegetables. And this might sound silly to some people, but sometimes I see people cutting the ends off like one by one. And I just wanted to show the way I do it is I leave the rubber bands on and I just cut above it. Give it a good rinse, shake it off, and toss it onto a foil-lined cookie sheet. I rarely roast asparagus. I usually cook it in a pan, but this is probably definitely the easiest way to do it. And I just drizzle it with some olive oil. And my favorite way to season asparagus is with some garlic sea salt and some pepper. And then I just Simply threw that in with the casserole and I let that cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. And here is everything straight from the oven. I think that casserole is gorgeous. I love when things have like a golden brown topping and asparagus always looks appetizing to me. I really want to try to incorporate it into my diet at least once a week because asparagus has so many great benefits for you. But here is my plate. That casserole was really great, but it would have been perfect if I didn't forget the cream of chicken because it was lacking a little bit of creaminess and a little bit of salt but I will definitely be making it again soon. Next up was dinner at my parents' house. This was my brother's birthday, and this is the meal that he requested. So my dad made a meatloaf with some corn and some macaroni and cheese, my son's favorite, and then some candied yams. These are probably the best that I have ever had, and hands down, one of my favorite things. And then, of course, some Sister Schubert rolls. It's been a while since I've showed one of his meals. He's just had a lot going on, and they've also recently moved, but now he is back into the swing of things. The next day, Josh and I dropped the kids off at my parents' house, and we did some shopping for the kids, and then we stopped at Drake's in Lexington, Kentucky. This was our first time ever eating there, and holy moly, it was so, so good. Josh got a fried bologna sandwich, and I had a buffalo chicken quesadilla with some sweet potato waffle fries, and it was just like out of this world good. Highly recommend. Mm -hmm. If I had to say what my number one favorite food was, it would hands down be a loaded baked potato. To me, there is nothing better. They are just so perfect. And A1 sauce is an absolute must. I won't eat it any other way. And those sandwiches went perfectly with it. I love the mixture of like hot and cold for a dinner. And sandwiches is like something that I love but rarely ever had. But these were on point. And that Olive Garden dressing on the bread made these like exceptional. So the last dinner of the week, I tried some Swedish meatballs in the crock pot. This was another new recipe to me. All you need is one can of cream of chicken soup, one can of beef broth. I used a lower sodium version. And then one of these like Lipton onion soup mixes. And yes, I do strain out the dehydrated onions because I just cannot stand that. But I do love the flavor of like the packet. It's like different than onion powder. 
gives it a really nice flavor. And then you'll also need two tablespoons of A1 sauce. Um, that bottle was almost empty because of the baked potatoes the night before. So I just got out what I could. I probably ended up with at least one tablespoon. It's always a sad, sad day when you're out of A1 sauce, but I just whisked those ingredients together. And these are the meatballs I'm using. My dad actually gave me these. These are chicken meatballs and they are fully cooked and they are frozen. I'm just throwing them in frozen and I will take the time here in a little bit to kind of break those apart. It's probably not necessarily necessary because they will break apart while they're cooking, but I just went ahead and did that and I cooked mine on low for five and a half hours. I would say they'd be good anywhere from four to six hours. Just depends on your day. And here they are once they were done. And you'll need to add in a cup of sour cream. I have these two containers that were almost empty. Definitely need to go grocery shopping, but I ended up with at least half a cup. And then I just cooked up on the side a half a bag of egg noodles, drained those, tossed that in, sprinkled it with some pepper, and then I just stirred everything together. And then here is my plate. This turned out so much better than what I was expecting. We all absolutely loved it. Even my kids, which kind of shocked me. And I just served it with some peas, some leftover yams that my dad sent me home with, and some of those leftover rolls from earlier in the week. But that is going to wrap up this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it, um, found something that maybe you wanted to try for your family. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all having an amazing week and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.